Hey everyone, talking about the top five best men's fragrances sold at Ulta. A couple things. First of all, I'm not saying these are only for men to wear. I'm talking about ones that are in the men's labeled section at Ulta. Second, I would not actually recommend buying these at Ulta because they're going to be more expensive most of the time than where you could check someplace like FragranceNet. But I figure sometimes people get gift cards and if you don't really like most of the other stuff at Ulta and you're looking for a masculine leaning fragrance, these are my picks for the five best. I'm not including certain things that kind of objectively might be more considered that way, like Blue de Chanel or Sauvage are very popular. I think Blue de Chanel can be a little bit boring sometimes and I just picked my legit real life top five favorites here. So jumping in, these are in no particular order. First up, Chanel Allure um, Sport. The notes in this are orange, sea notes, aldehydes, pepper, neroli, cedar, vanilla, musk, amber, and vetiver. This has good longevity, moderate projection, and it's masculine in a modern, fresh way. I've heard some people describe it as almost being like an upscale deodorant, which is kind of true. Like it's just one of those things that what you want you want to put on. It's almost like yeah, a sports scent is pretty accurate. I would say like just chill, fresh, nothing fancy, but smells really good and it smells pretty unique. Mm, yes, it's like this creamy orange with the tonka, a little bit of spice from the pepper. The neroli comes in there with a little bit of citrus smell. Really, really nice dry down too. Uh, next up, we have Dior Fahrenheit, the Eau de Toilette version. The notes in this are leather, violet leaf, vetiver, nutmeg, musk, cedar, lavender, orange, honeysuckle, sandalwood, amber, chamomile, tonka bean, patchouli, jasmine, carnation, hawthorn, lemon, bergamot, and lily of the valley. So I liked this so much more than I thought I would before going into it. People sometimes talk about how the opening smells like gasoline, and I totally can kind of see that, but to me it's in like a good way as weird as that might sound. And I liked this even before I got into more weird niche fragrances that literally have like gasoline or motor oil type notes. So I don't think this is like, you have to be into weird stuff to uh, like it. There's almost like a rubbery aspect of it. And to me, it almost smells like brand new shoes, like leather shoes, but with some kind of fresh twist to it as well. Definitely worth trying at least a sample of if you like leathery notes and fragrance, but you don't want something so full on like Tuscan leather or ombre leather, I think, uh, Fahrenheit is a classic and I think it still smells amazing today. It also has great projection and longevity. Another thing about these two in terms of the Ulta aspect, then you can go in person and try a spray for free too without having to worry about doing a blind buy or even paying for a sample. And Fahrenheit is definitely very, very masculine leaning. Next up, Versace Eros, the Eau de Toilette original version. The notes in this are vanilla, tonka bean, mint, lemon, green apple, and broxen cedar, geranium, vetiver, and oak moss. So as much as it would be cool to say that I only like, you know, esoteric niche fragrances and this and that, my nose cannot help what it likes. And this is in my top 20 fragrances of all time, I fully admit. And one of very few designers that I, for my taste, consider full bottle worthy. Ugh, yeah, great combination of like fresh and sweet and brisk, works in a lot of different types of weather. I hear people say mixed things, but I can wear this in cold weather, hot weather, as long as you don't overspray. And that's the other thing, this has major projection and longevity, at least for me. This is probably by far my longest, you know, my the out of the full bottles that I have, this has the best longevity and projection. Granted, I don't really gravitate towards things with much longevity and projection in general, but this is, you can smell this from really far away. Oh, just so good like a vanilla mint but not as boring as that sounds and it still I don't really smell stuff like this very often at all people can say oh it's sweet there's a sweet trend all the masculine ones but this particular thing the thing is though a lot of other people are going to be wearing this but there are not a lot of other fragrances out there that smell just like this so if you're looking for something that's the most unique in the world not necessarily this because a lot of people are wearing Aero specifically but I think it's great and I don't care about that at a certain point. Like I wouldn't want to only own fragrances that everybody else around me is wearing, but sometimes it's nice to have one that's just like, that smells fucking good. So, and this is one of very few that my wife has unprompted been like, ooh, you smell good. What is that multiple times when I pour them? Next up, <laughs> another one that might get some flack, but Carolina Herrera, Bad Boy, the Eau de Toilette version. The notes are grapefruit, white pepper, vetiver, clary sage, tonka bean, and cocoa. I avoided trying that for a long time because people talk a lot of shit about the bottle, which looks like a black lightning bolt. I personally think it's kind of cool. Like, I don't see what's wrong with that. It's, there's a lot more babyish things that it could look like than that. I, I don't think there's anything fun with having a, or wrong with having a fun bottle. But after finally trying, I was like, what? Wow, I've been missing out. 
it definitely smells like a mass appealing designer fragrance like in a good way uh but it has a slight uniqueness to it and the chocolate is so well done in that to me it doesn't sometimes niche chocolate makes it just too bitter dark chocolate like try hard you know you're not gonna like this but it's real chocolate type of thing and other times sometimes designer ones do ones that are just so sugary and watered down this to me has that perfect richness that just combines yeah some spice with it some aromatics some citrus the tonka bean adds an almost vanilla like aspect really really good it's the tonka is kind of done in a similar way to eros in a bad boy and all around, yeah, I just think this is one of the best masculine designer fragrance. I think I've smelled pretty much almost every masculine leading designer fragrance or any fragrance at Ulta. And this is indeed in my top five. Honestly, I think it would probably be full bottle worthy for me if it worked with my skin chemistry. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but I do like the smell of it so much on like a test strip or on my shirt or on other people. That has moderate projection and longevity and a lot of that depends on your skin masculine but that one's not like hyper masculine i would say it's definitely on the sweeter side but not something like jean paul gaultier lamal level sweet uh and if you can get past the silly looking bottle i really do think that it smells very good to anybody that you're going to be around most likely as long as they're not a niche snob but i mostly wear niche and i still think it smells good so Last, Polo Red, the Eau de Toilette. The notes are cranberry, grapefruit, amber, coffee, woods, saffron, lemon, and sage. So right off the bat, that's a pretty unique list for a designer, especially someone as big as like Ralph Lauren and the Polo line. This is like that rare cranberry masculine designer scent. And I don't even see cranberry that often, even in feminine leaning ones, but especially not in masculine leaning, leaning ones. This mix is like coffee, amber, citrus, woods, and cranberry so well. It doesn't smell try hard in terms of like some hyper masculine way, but it also does not smell candy sweet, moderate longevity and projection. And yeah, I just, I don't even like coffee notes that much usually, but the way it's in here is so smooth and perfectly balanced by the tart cranberry. The amber adds this creaminess. There's the woods that kind of keep it from going too far in that direction. And yeah, I'm definitely, uh, impressed by it and it's one of my favorites uh, by Ralph Lauren. Bonus mention this isn't in the official top five but I really wanted to include this. It came out this year and I think this is probably pricier than any of the other ones on the list so I'm just including it as a bonus mention but it is sold at Ulta. Tom Ford Noir Extreme the Parfum version not just the regular Noir Extreme. Um, this has notes of cardamom, ginger, amber, cedar, guyac wood, tonka bean, sandalwood, and some other stuff in there as well. There's kind of mixed stuff saying exactly what notes are, but I think this is one of the best Tom Ford fragrances out there and one of the most mass appealing. A lot of them, it's like people around you might think, you know, it's more of an acquired taste the way that certain Tom Fords are done. This one smells really like sexy and suave, not as gourmandy as the original, the like Tom Ford Noir Extreme without the parfum at the end. There's almost like a leathery aspect to it, almost like a faint smoke in a cigarette-y type of vibe, but cool and not straight up like you smell like an ashtray or anything. Uh, yeah, so just spi spicier, smokier, more leathery, sexy version of the original of that. And I definitely recommend trying it, you know, just doing a spray if you're ever in an Ulta. And that has good longevity and moderate projection. Fairly masculine, but it could be unisex. And yeah, all of these are masculine leaning and in the men's department at Ulta. Some of them are more masculine than others. I would say the most masculine ones on this list are going to probably be Chanel or um sport it's not even like tobacco-y wild type of masculine but it's more it's just very very masculine in terms of yeah like a sports type of fragrance for the most part and then Fahrenheit is definitely very masculine so yeah these are my picks there's plenty of other great stuff that Ulta sells but if I was going to pick ones that I personally would love to smell the most would feel the most confident wearing around other people and just all around have the right package for what I'm looking for, these are what I would choose. But I recommend just, you know, trying, if you can go in there, spray whatever you can and uh, check it out. But again, I would not recommend buying these at Ulta if you don't have a gift card or there's not a big sale going on. You should check like FragranceNet and places like that where you can get a much cheaper deal. But if you have a gift card you, or for whatever reason there's a big sale, anything, you're at Ulta with somebody and you want to make a purchase, I definitely uh, personally recommend any of these.